Will Beyond Good and Evil 2 follow any trends from Fallout 76? Hello, fellow space monkeys. This is the mildly morose man, otherwise known as Dan, or Dan the Man, whichever you fancy. I am here to bring you another thought-provoking video on the new game Beyond Good and Evil 2. A concern that has been voiced by many others, myself included, is the worry that Beyond Good and Evil 2 will be too big for its own good. If the open world will really be as big as a solar system where you can go climb to the top of that mountain on a different planet within a matter of moments, then how will it be possible to fill all of that space with meaningful content? Ubisoft might just be implementing something to address that very issue based on conversation from the fourth livestream shown in December of 2018. The first thing that needs to be highlighted is the small scale hidden within the massive scale. I'll tell you what I mean, but let me first say that this is really good news. This shows that Ubisoft is actually concerned with the density of meaningful content that they will be able to create for this massive game. We need to notice something about where the gameplay has been taking place since the reveal of Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yes, we are in a solar system, in Solar System 3, and the gameplay has focused on one particular planet thus far, but actually it turns out that planet is a moon of a massive gas giant, Dius. I highly doubt that we will be able to visit the gas giant in any way. It just won't work. See, there is a massive scale, that massive gas giant, but Ubisoft is placing a smaller fence around actual gameplay areas. We aren't playing on the planet, but the moon of that planet. Again, in the live stream, they tell us that the moon, Soma, where all of this gameplay is happening, doesn't actually turn, or, or turns in such a way that half of the moon is always facing outer space, and the other half is always facing the gas giant, Dius. Here, again, they might have effectively cut in half the area that the player will expect to find a vibrant world filled with meaningful content. I actually consider this a good thing. They have found a way to limit the area they actually have to fill, so hopefully, they will be able to better fill this smaller scale play area with meaningful content worthy of the space opera title that they so often use. As I was thinking about this concept, I was reminded of something that was shown off at the reveal of the game in 2017. Michel Ancel was showing off the tech that would allow them to generate the effects of a massive crater crashing into a planet, actually changing the surface of the planet in real time. Follow me on this one. I'm sure many of you have heard of the game Fallout 76. I know, many of you have heard just how bad this game was at launch, but there are some good ideas implemented in a game that will take a lot of work to fix. Nukes and how Bethesda has set up indie game content are a high point for Fallout 76. Now, I've played Fallout 76, but I am not yet ready to start launching nukes onto the surface of Appalachia. And in case you are unfamiliar with this gameplay mechanic, the players can launch nukes after obtaining and decoding a password that needs to be entered into a computer at a mission silo. At that point, players are able to pick a spot on the map that they would like to nuke with an atom bomb. This does not totally destroy that area, but instead it creates a higher level instance with harder monsters to kill, higher level loot to obtain, and crafting items only available in the nuclear blast zone. This content is unique, not always available, and varies based on what location is nuked. Maybe you already see where I'm going with this one. When I saw that the moon Soma is fixed in a way that only one side is inhabitable and the other side is constantly pummeled by asteroids that provide unique opportunities to gather resources, I thought, Ubisoft has done it again. Not only have they shrinked the area in which they need to create meaningful content to make the world feel alive, they have created an area on one half of the planet that can be affected in real time in order to provide new gameplay experiences on a regular basis. This could really be a great gameplay mechanic if these instances of content are interesting and rewarding. Just imagine some of the things that could happen based on what we know so far. When a meteor hits, that immediately creates an area which rare and sought after resources are available. This will attract other pirates that would want to capitalize on those resources. Could there be other options available other than just engaging in combat? Maybe you could join forces or force them to give you resources so that you will leave the area. 
What about all of those monkey miners that would be in dire need because of a massive chasm is threatening to swallow their whole company of workers? Do you save the miner slaves in hopes to grow the size of your crew or just to build rapport with the monkey-human hybrids? There are so many things that could make this content interesting and rewarding. So I'm glad that Ubisoft seems to be creating some hypothetical fences around the gameplay areas and beyond Good and Evil 2. And they've done it in such a way that preserves the massive sense of scale. If they implemented some instance-based content similar to the in-game in Fallout 76, then I think that would continue to help them fill this massive solar system with meaningful content. So what do you think about implementing this sort of feature in Beyond Good and Evil 2? Have you played through a blast zone area in Fallout 76, and is it an enjoyable experience? Let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all things Beyond Good and Evil 2, and if you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content from this mildly morose man.